Hello Performance Ninjas and welcome to the lab assignment about profile guided optimizations. Let me start this video by explaining what is profile guided optimizations or PGO for short. On this diagram I show you a traditional compilation pipeline of a C and C++ code, right? So the compiler first parses and uh, analyzes the high-level source code and then it comes through the code optimization stage and finally the machine code is generated for the given C++ source code. When a typical optimizing compiler compiles our program, it makes a lot of decisions that may affect performance of the generated code. For example, compiler needs to decide whether it should inline uh, a particular function, which variables to keep in registers, which loops to vectorize, and so on and so forth. And to make those decisions, compilers usually rely on fairly complicated cost models and heuristics. When we vectorize the loop, we can calculate a cost for a scalar version and vectorized version, compare them and make decision whether to vectorize or not based on that cost. Along with the generic cost model, transformation passes usually have uh, multiple heuristics, which is an exception from this generic cost model, a sort of a, a pattern matching, right? When you try to recognize a specific pattern in the code and optimize it um, separately from the generic cost model. So you see, for a lot of the decisions that compiler makes, it tries to guess what would be the best outcome. However, usually performance heavily depends on the runtime behavior of the program and the input data, which compiler obviously doesn't know beforehand. Just to give you an example, for unrolling the loop, it's crucial to know how much iterations the loop will make, right? And so this is where the profiling information becomes handy. If we could give that knowledge to the compiler, then it will be able to make much better optimization decisions. And so there is a specific format of data that compilers recognize and a set of specific options that allow you to feed that profiling data into the compilation. Just a short sidestep here. If you will actually take a look at the LLVM sources, then oftentimes you will see a pattern like that, that if the profiling data available, then you go ahead and make transformations based on that profiling data. Otherwise, you just fall back to using generic cost models and heuristics. Here is a list of transformations that could be enhanced with PGO. Function inline in register location and a few others. By the way, and sometimes in the internet, you will see uh, a term feedback driven optimization or FDO, but it essentially refers to the same thing. Based on my personal experience, you can expect to see a performance speed up of uh, up to 15%, which may seem like a free speed up, but as always, there are caveats. Let's step back and revisit the complete process of using PGO. As a first step, you tell the compiler to instrument the code for you. It will insert some bookkeeping code in every function and every basic block just for the purpose of collecting this runtime statistics. Right? For example, it will count the number of times the function was called the number of times you entered a certain loop and the number of iterations uh, it made. Second, you need to get the input data and run it with your instrumented binary and this will generate a new file with runtime statistics, which is kind of a dictionary with runtime counts, which compiler later may use for guiding its optimizations. Right? And so remember that the end goal here 
is to find out which functions are hot, which are cold, and feed that knowledge back into the compiler. Finally, as you may have guessed, we pass that profiling data to the compiler and ask it to recompile our program again, hoping to get the better optimized version of it. If you're familiar with machine learning, it is actually very similar, right? So number two is our training phase and number three is our inferencing phase. So you can view it as we use the input data to train the compiler with the end goal of generating a better optimized version of the program that can operate on that particular input data. The caveat here is that such training suffers from overfitting, right? Again, if you're familiar with this term from machine learning. So what does it mean? It means that you can expect better performance when you will run your program on the same input data. However, there is no guarantee that the recompiled binary or better optimized binary will perform equally well on every other input data. Again, just to give you an example, suppose there are two different scenarios of running your application. In first scenario, the hottest function in your program is function A, okay? But you train PGO on the second scenario in which the function B is actually the hottest, right? And dominates the runtime. And so what will happen, compiler will optimize the binary for the second scenario in which the function B is hot. And it may decide that function A is completely cold and you may see a degradation in performance in the first scenario, right? So this is the example how you may pessimize performance in some cases. So you as a user of PGO should be careful about choosing workloads for training based on how they will be used in practice, right? And probably the easiest and simplest um, option here will be to train your program directly on the input data from real world scenario. Just a quick mention about the compiler option that you may use for uh, instrumenting the binary uh, with LLVM. Uh, minus F profile instr generate uh, will do that. And there are two other ways how you can collect uh, profiling data without actually instrumenting the code, right? And so first of them leverages the CPU monitoring unit to get the data. So you run uninstrumented version of your binary as usual under profile, right? And then you convert uh, this profiling data into the format that the compiler can recognize. This is more lightweight version, however, less accurate than uh, instrumenting the code. Some of the more modern approaches try to predict runtime statistics based on machine learning and they do that statically and do not require even running the binary. Okay, so now when you collected the training data, you feed it back to the compiler with minus F profile instr use option. And if you have not just a single training workload, but many, that's not a problem, right? You can run them both and then just uh, merge the profiling data that was generated for them using tools like LLVM prof data. Okay, let's take a look at the source code of this lab assignment. So this is actually a complete source code of the Lua interpreter, which by the way, I do not recommend to study it. Um, you can of course do it if you want, but uh, it's not required for completing this lab assignment. And so just to give you a high level overview of what you need to do in this lab assignment, you need to do first instrument uh, the code using the options that I showed earlier, run the instrumented binary on all the inputs for this benchmark, and third, modify the CMake list file to feed the generated profiling data back into the compilation pipeline, right? And so your submission 
for this lab assignment will consist of two parts, right? So first you change the CMake list file and you provide essentially commit, right? You push the uh, file with the generated runtime statistics. And so next I will show how to do it step by step. But if you still want to work it on it yourself, it's now a good time to pause the video, go to the code uh, of the lab assignment and try to fix it yourself. Okay, so as usual, as a first step, uh, I, I build and run the benchmark to collect the baseline. Okay, so 7100 milliseconds is our baseline. And so what I do now, I go ahead and add minus F profile insert generate option into my CMake file. I save it and I uh, recompile and rerun the benchmark again. And so this new binary, instrumented binary, will actually perform much worse. Well, and this is kind of expected, right? Because remember of all the bookkeeping code uh, that is there. And so we have uh, 8600 milliseconds, but it, what we do have as well, we have this uh, default.prof raw file generated in the build directory with profiling data. So now I actually need to use LVM prof data tool uh, to convert the raw profiling data into the format that Clang can recognize. So here's how I do that. Okay, so. Here is actually our uh, code.prof uh, data, which is uh, a file with our profiling data. And now we should feed it back to the compiler, right? So I go to the uh, CMake list.txt file, and then we don't need that line anymore, but I add a new line with um, minus F profile instr uh, dot, uh, dash use, and I point it to the newly generated uh, prof data file, right? Okay, so after that is done, the last thing we need to do is just uh, rerun uh, the binary and, and see what will be the outcome. And here we go. You see uh, the runtime decreased from 7100 milliseconds to uh, 6600 milliseconds, which, which is, you know, um, a fairly reasonable speed up if you consider uh, the amount of work that, that we have done to, to gain it, right? All right, so here are the steps you need to make in order to utilize the profile guide optimizations. As a bonus exercise, try to profile the baseline and the improved version and see uh, how compiler um, optimized differently the hotspots. So essentially try to figure out where the performance improvement comes from. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I see you in the next lab assignment. Take care.